When I think about my favorite games and why they've managed to stand out amidst the competition, music is one of the first things to come to mind. I strongly believe music is an element that can amplify really any experience when done properly, and it can certainly influence the perception of a game. Take this example from Mega Man X3. That right there is the version I'm gonna be playing. When I break it down, my reasoning comes down to how significant a story's music can be to immersing the player, directing the audience to feel a certain emotion, or building the scene. As a result, I listen to and think a lot about video game music, and despite not understanding the complexity behind composition and not studying it, I just love talking about it. So we're gonna rank my top 10 favorite songs from video games. Now, just like with every other top 10 list, this is simply my personal opinion and is not an objective view at all. There are way too many good video game songs out there for me to say, yeah, this is the catch-all for everybody. So this is just a sampling to understand what I personally like. Aside from that, the only rule I'll be imposing for this list is that I can only select one song from any franchise. If I allowed for free reign, this list would get a little oversaturated, and I really like the idea of recommending songs from various games so you can check out the rest of their soundtracks if what you hear piques your interest. And instead of an honorable mentions list, I'll also just be listing three other songs from the series or game which that pick comes from just to showcase other contenders. And one last thing before we get started, if you do end up enjoying this video and would like to leave a like, it really does help out the video, and consider subscribing if you'd be interested in seeing more video game discussions and analyses. But without further ado, let's kick off this list. Starting off this list is ironically enough the ending theme to some of my favorite games, the Pokemon Generation 2 titles. I believe Pokemon has some of the best soundtracks out there, so I could have gone with a lot of different options, but I really resonate with what this song in particular stands for. Pokemon Company President Tsunekazu Ishihara essentially said that he believed Gold and Silver would be the final entries in the Pokemon franchise, which is just ludicrous to think about with how deeply entrenched the series is in the entertainment industry. But, consequently, this song feels like a celebration and the send-off to the Pokémon franchise with its lively melody and the use of the Pokémon theme as a leitmotif once the song rolls around towards its conclusion. Then, we conclude with a slow, music box rendition of the credit song that really sells the conclusive tone it's going for. It's the sleepy lullaby that plays after flipping to the last page to see the end, and closing the story. Although I played games like Mega Man, Mario, and Sonic beforehand, Pokemon Silver was the first game I could call my own, and the credits being the gold, silver, and crystal is the key to unlocking those nostalgic memories from my youth. Although I cover a pool of different video games on the channel, I do primarily discuss Xenoblade Chronicles, so <laughs> yeah, some representation on this list had to be expected by people familiar with me. However, what might be unexpected is what song I ultimately chose, which is Once We Part Ways. I absolutely love this song, and it comes down to how it emits this air of reassurance in whatever decisions you make in life. Furthermore, it helps support some of the game's most emotional moments and ties them together under the game's core themes. Xenoblade Chronicles' narrative evolves from a story of revenge to one about looking forward to life's little surprises, but at its core, it's grounded by the people in the main protagonist Shulk's life. Throughout all of the ups and downs of the journey, which almost seem to manifest in the song's transition between bombastic and quiet moments, his friends are there for him, and that's where that comfort comes from. Once We Part Ways doesn't have the raw hype and guitar solos of You Will Know Our Names or Mechanical Rhythm that the series is known for, but it doesn't have to. 
what it does is showcase the range this series has to offer. I love it for that. If you could roll up pure bliss and happiness into a bundle of a song, <laughs> a katamari, if you will, th then you'd get Lonely Rolling Star. Debuting in the wacky, acid trip of a game that is Katamari Damacy, Lonely Rolling Star is one of my go-to feel-good songs. What's even better is that these lyrics do have some meaning. They tell the story of a girl who patiently awaits the return of her lover, and she will continue to wait and cheer them on until they return. Holy fucking wholesome, I love that. Lyrical tracks are some of my favorites out there, because they are able to tell stories that might further accentuate the events taking place within the game. But a voice can also just really give a song that much more presence, if Lonely Rolling Star's strong synthetic instruments and bass line weren't enough. If you're looking for a song to cheer you up or make you feel strangely nostalgic, give this song or the excellent orchestrated cover by 8-Bit Band a listen. You won't regret it. Speaking of lyrical tracks... A love letter to Bond films and sung by the talented Cynthia Harrell, Snake Eater is likely topping the list of a lot of people's favorite Metal Gear songs. The song plays in three notable places. The game's opening sequence, and the final boss. Each instance gives off a different feeling, from hype, to reflectiveness, to a mix of the two emotions. Snake Eater's lyrics are not only symbolic of the feelings of a specific character within the narrative itself, but it's a song that persists across the generation-spanning epic saga that is Metal Gear. But, in typical Metal Gear fashion, it's not free from camp and goofiness with lines like, and someday you feed on a tree frog. But it tucks those away within a motivating, powerful song. As for the melody itself, those beginning drums are iconic, and the use of brass and strings to mimic the score of a classic spy film is wonderfully done. Unfortunately, this is really the first time I've discussed anything Metal Gear on the channel despite how much I love the series. Snake Eater as a song and a game are the peak of what Metal Gear has to offer, and I believe should be experienced by more people. The Kingdom Hearts franchise can be hit or miss with a lot of people. It's not the sum of our parts. It's the sum of our hearts. Yeah. But I think one aspect people can unanimously agree upon is that the music is phenomenal. I mean, you have one of my favorite composers, Yoko Shimomura. That is like the quality seal of approval. But this pick doesn't come from Shimomura, but Hikaru Utada with Kingdom Hearts 2 Sanctuary specifically the after battle version. There are two things within Kingdom Hearts 2 that never fail to get me emotional. The ending sequence where you see Roxas and Naminé flash into the spots of their original, oh my god, I love that so much. And the looming threat of copyright, which is why we're not using Sanctuary in the background here. But regardless, this piece is exceptionally good with the softer moments, sparse piano notes, and even some backwards audio that fits the song quite well. Very much like the credit song to Gold, Silver, and Crystal, this mood given off by the piece feels like it could have been used for the conclusion to the Kingdom Hearts saga. I almost ended up going with Birth by Sleep's Dismiss or Limpeto Oscuro from Dream Drop Distance, but I just kept coming back to what Sanctuary had to offer. Alright, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit with this one. Number 5 is the main theme to the Legend of Zelda series. From which game you might ask? All of them. So 
here's the thing, right? This theme has been remixed and reworked and leitmotifed into so many songs within the series that it feels practically impossible to pick a single one. You got the title theme to the original game, the title theme to the Game Boy Color games, a section in the credits to Skyward Sword. We would literally be here all day. But the thing is, it sounds good practically every time. So yeah, I'm not really picking a specific version, and if that's not good enough and I had to pick something else, I don't know, Gerudo Valley's pretty good. The Mega Man series was gonna find its way onto this list one way or another, and for a series centered around music, the soundtracks have to bring their A game, and yeah, I can say they delivered pretty well. I went back and forth for a long time on which Mega Man song should make the cut, but I ended up going with Mega Man 3's Whistle Concert. The character theme of the coolest character from the classic series Proto Man, Whistle Concert is this slower piece that shows a more heartfelt side to the original Mega Man titles that were pretty light on story. That is, unless you decided to dig into the manuals. It gives off an air of unspoken history, which is fitting since Proto Man is Mega Man's older brother and Dr. Light's original robot. And just like Proto Man, the song is more carefree than intense. And the way that it's kind of embodied itself as Proto Man's calling card is pretty dope. The concept of a video game song utilizing whistling, especially back in the NES days, I find to be rather creative, and a great part of what makes Mega Man 3 so special. A song that unfortunately just missed the cut of this list was Final Hours from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It has this ominous air to it that perfectly captures feelings of desperation and melancholy in a way that I never thought would be matched. That was until I played a certain visual novel called Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Nine Nine Nine's morphogenetic sorrow is quite simply an experience. Although this song plays a few times throughout the game, its most noteworthy appearance is during the final puzzle, and it perfectly sets the mood. With its metronome-like pacing and airy yet scratchy main melody, it really puts the player in the headspace that this is the culmination of everything I've been working towards. Morphogenetic Sorrow went on to essentially become the series' main theme, functioning as the leitmotif in other songs or just flat out getting remixes. Unlike a lot of other songs on this list, I find it more difficult to listen to Morphogenetic Sorrow on its own because of how beautifully interlocked this melody is with the final puzzle, and I find it something that should be heard in the moment. And yet here I am putting it in the video for all you to listen to. Huh. Well, because it serves its purpose so well, it had to be at the top of this list. What is likely the most recent addition to this list, Song of the Ancients somehow managed to surpass the competition by checking off all the appropriate boxes. Lyrical track? Check. Simultaneously emotional and energetic? Yeah, yeah, that's a check. Able to be remixed into many versions that all sound good? Looks like we uh, have a bit of an overachiever on this one. Hell, this song made it into the bloody Olympics. This isn't a bit, this actually happened. Like we heard first and most often in the game's starting town, this song morphs and takes shape in many forms, ultimately culminating in the theme for the game's midpoint and penultimate bosses. The rendition used for those bosses has impactful drums and a duet to boot, which give it a strong identity and are emblematic of the main boss fight this song plays in. The version in the new Near Replicant 3.14 Carry the One Championship Edition is certainly my favorite, with a much more dynamic progression and an instrumental section near the end that feels simply whimsical. The lyrics are also in an original language created by singer Emmy Evans, 
and I think it's a testament to how people can resonate with the messages and intended tones of a song without understanding what it's literally saying. Due to the scaffolding established by the other renditions of the song used throughout the game, there's great weight, determination, yet apprehension all within this single melody, so the song is quite nuanced and excellent both in and out of context. Ever since I started playing the Nier series, I have practically been listening to the song non-stop, and I can't help but appreciate how amazing it is. Both of Nier's soundtracks are some of the best video games have to offer, and Song of the Ancients is a shining example of that. One of the most iconic songs in video games, One Winged Angel is simply a masterpiece. In order to pay homage to the Cray Spawn of Genova, it makes use of jarring notes and unexpected progressions. Oh, and including lyrics describing how the boss standing before you is burning inside with violent anger and even just saying his name, yeah, that goes a long way too. Having studied Latin for a while, the use of Latin lyrics just makes the song that much better. My personal favorite section of the song comes near its conclusion when the song focuses in and layers two chains of Latin lyrics. It's terrifying, it's epic, it does it all. Sephiroth isn't even one of my favorite villains, but this song is just so well constructed and it fits in perfectly. Like a lot of other songs on this list, One Winged Angel has been reworked countless times in Kingdom Hearts, Crisis Core, Advent Children, and so on. My favorite rendition has to be Final Fantasy VII Remake's One Winged Angel Rebirth, which just feels like a love letter to the song's history while adding a lot of its own flair to it. I don't really know what else to say that hasn't been said about One Winged Angel, but Uematsu knocked it out of the park, and it's a brilliant way to cap off the already fantastic soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII. So, there you have it. My 10 favorite songs from video games, or at least 10 of my favorites. Like I said, there's a high probability some of these shift around, but I think it shows what I value in video game music, as well as gives you a general idea of what I love. And hopefully, if you haven't heard some of these songs, then hey, maybe you got some new music to listen to. If you enjoyed this top 10, then let me know because I enjoy ranking stuff and they could be nice to make every so often, especially because I wanted a shorter non-Xenoblade video to come out before I entered the Xenoblade Free Zone later this month. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and all the continued support, and until next time.